completely jack up his name. <laughs> let's see. Sylvania Howard. All right, hold on a second. I feel like we're already live. I always like do the whole delay on this going, are we live yet? And we're always live. So I'm gonna pretend like we're already live, everybody, if you're paying attention. And we are live today. With a, I'm really excited about this now, actually. We just chatted a few minutes before I went live. And uh, this gentleman is pretty cool. His name is uh, Steve Sims. And Steve is the CEO and founder of Bluefish, which is a concierge service. It's the number, like one of the top concierge services in the entire world. And um, so I'm excited about this. I was connected with him by Sylvania Herod. So big, huge, fat shout out to Sylvania for connecting me with this super cool guy. I'm really excited about this. So um, Steve, tell me a little bit about your business and uh, how you got to become an entrepreneur. I don't know if anyone ever uh, became an entrepreneur. I think it was one of those seeds you had in you. Um, I think as an Irish lad from London, um, as you probably guessed from my accent already, uh, I think I was just always the kid that said, why? I, like and I, th I don't know if anyone ever put, uh, became an entrepreneur. Hello, what was that? I oh, that was me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. That was me. I got some echo. Um, I was the kid that always asked why. And I think that's inherent in all entrepreneurs. We're always asking why, how can we do that? And then we get in a job and realize that we don't fit. So I think I was always an entrepreneur. It was just looking for my way. Um, Bluefish, I actually started in the early 90s. I was a doorman of a questionable nightclub in Hong Kong. And I started throwing parties and getting people into parties and gate crashing bigger parties and then throwing bigger events. And it just grew to the, to the place it is now 20 odd years later, leading concierge firm in Hong Kong, China, Poland, Russia, all over the planet. This is like, this is really, really cool. So you actually, and you have a pretty impressive Instagram account too, I must say. Um, oh, thank I'm, you. I am editing our, our lives so that people know who you are. Um, yeah, I was checking out your Instagram account a little bit earlier too. That's very impressive that the stuff that you're doing. So we are an Instagram group, but we do a lot more. We talk about all, so all, so all sorts of really fun things. So something that you mentioned during, uh, before we went live was that... <laughs> You like to teach people how to get couples married by the Pope. So tell, <laughs> tell me a little bit about that. You also, go ahead and show the people that we already know we have one thing in common. Show them what you showed me just before we went live. <laughs> in my garage, you need refreshment like all people do. So I have a little bottle of whiskey here <laughs> on its own cradle. So Alcoholics Anonymous, we are not. Um, <laughs> So, no, one of the things that a client contacted me, I had a client from Europe contacted me and he said, hey, we want to get married in the Vatican by the Pope. So it was just one of those requests that I got. So I had to start finding out how I get into the Vatican, how I get to know people in there. It's actually, believe it or not, a public domain. It's actually a public location. So like all churches, you can walk into any church. Right. The Vatican's actually the same. They just make it a bit awkward. So it is public, but you have to have someone actually open the door or let it happen kind of thing. So there's still a bit of red tape, but um, it's pretty cool doing that. And then the, the Pope, um, on special request, can come in and bless the couple during a ceremony. That is so cool. So you do all sorts of stuff like that. All right, listen, I'm going to be that person that points out the elephant in the room or the motorcycle behind you. So you are clearly somebody who has some toys back there. Is it, How long have you been doing that? What you got back there anyway? So, uh, oh God, uh, this is my race bike, very delicately and subtly put there because uh, I raced it last weekend. So I want to make sure it doesn't blow up on me. <laughs> I've got some uh, old Nortons at the back. I've got some Harleys over there. I've got about seven. So uh, I, li I like my toys. If we can't have toys, what's the point? That's absolutely right. Toys and whiskey. Toys and whiskey. That's so cool. <laughs> so Steve, so you, something that, um, this is really interesting to me. I've actually, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. I've got more, I feel like I've got more people that are referring uh, concierge services to me to help them run their Instagram account or show them yeah. how to get out there a little bit more on social media. So something that you and I chatted about earlier is that, um, I told, I mentioned to you that I'm horrible about sending emails. Like I'm terrible about it. And you said that you actually did a speech one day 
talking about how email is dead. So what is your way of communicating with your audience, with your prospects? Um, well, I do, I do a lot of speeches and I get mm -hmm. pulled around to different entrepreneurial groups, which is good because I get to do a speech, but I also get to chat and hang out with these other speakers who are world-class geniuses and obviously far smarter than me. But I basically get some alone time with these people. So that's, that's my perk. And I get paid. So that's two <laughs> perks. Um, but one of, my, one of my speeches was email is dead. And it's because the number one communication route that everybody uses or used in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s was post, the mail. So if you said to someone back then, I'll oh, send in the letters dead, they'd look at you and you go, idiot. Now, fast forward, no one sends post. We send emails. You want something, they don't ask for your address. So even if they do, you give them your email address. And the trouble is, we all wake up in the morning with 2,000 bloody emails. Half of them are spam or from Russian wives or something. And so by the time you've actually gone through all of that, you're actually feeling as though you've harvested and got dejected a lot just to get to emails that are any good. Or worst case, have you ever seen the, the, the coffee delete? You walk in the Starbucks, you can watch this dance. They walk in the Starbucks and they ask for a mucka mucka whatever. They, get the, <laughs> they, they stood there in line. Straight away, they flip their phone out like it's some kind of new new or security blanket. And they go, delete, 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 delete. And they would delete anyone that they don't recognize. And quite often, you will now speak to someone and say, hey, did you get my email? And they'll go and search for it in junk or delete. Sorry, it was in junk. It's not proven valuable. So mm -hmm. I did this speech on uh, email is dead because if you pretend it is, then you start looking at all the other avenues that are available. Post, SMS, video texting, video voicemail, mass video, uh, that, um, mass voicemail or SMS texting. There's some good companies out there that are doing that now. You can do a recorded message and literally have it dropped into everyone's voicemail box without one ring happening. They just think they've missed your call. And then your clients, they're calling you. So I just try to get people to use other ways of media. And another one of those good ones, and this is how my Instagram page came about, was I had always been heavy on Facebook. And I won't say heavy, but I'd always been pretty engaged with posting just what I get up to. And luckily, my life does put me in some cool places. So, you know, there's some cool stuff to go on there. Then I started to do Twitter. Didn't really like it much, mm -hmm. but I loved Instagram. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I noticed about Instagram, which funny enough, a lot of people don't realize, I'm sure you do, but you can't look at someone's Facebook page unless you have a Facebook account. Well, the funny thing is the millionaires and billionaires I deal with, they don't have Facebook accounts, but they can look at your Instagram account because they don't have to have an Instagram account in order to do so. Correct. So that was, that was my big takeaway. And as soon as, as soon as that little cherry dropped, I was like, hell, this is the one I'm playing with. So then I started paying attention to Instagram first, Facebook second, then getting over to LinkedIn and Twitter. But Instagram became my prize meal. That's fantastic. That is so freaking cool that you figured that out, that you realize that. And that, and I saw, I think I pulled up your Instagram. You've got a little over 2,700 followers. And that's, that's pretty cool. Like you're, you're doing well, well. Blue, on Bluefish. Yeah. On Bluefish. Yeah. Yeah. On Bluefish, we got um, 2,700. And bear in mind, as I say, I don't want the phallic symbol nowadays of people like, yeah, oh, I've got like 700,000. I work with about 75 billionaires. Yep. Trust me, you don't need any more. Um, but my personal, my personal Instagram account, which is Steve D Sims, mm -hmm. um, that's just the stuff where I put the stupid, stupid shit I get up to. And I think that's about 25,000. So I think people like watching me get up the stupid shit. <laughs> well, and that's cool. But like, that's one of the big things that I actually, um, that I do in this group, I talk about in this group is I'm not one of those people. I don't call myself an Instagram expert. That's going to get you 10,000 followers in a week. I do exactly what you're talking about with kind of stepping away from the email piece and just kind of explaining to people how to get that organic, really cool built relationship building thing and how to turn, you can turn seven followers into $7,000 if you do it right. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's always like kind of what I, what I 
try to explain to people is that you don't have to have a ridiculous following. You just got to know how to do the thing with what you do have, right? How do you convert those people? So that's, that's kind of, that's kind of like what we do in this group of how I, how I kind of convey that message. So I think that's really cool though. I like your Instagram account a lot. Thank so you. If we have any questions popping in yet. Let me just I am actually, I think the key word there is engaged followers. Yep. Now there are a lot of people that I know have 10,000, 50,000, a hundred thousand. And again, that's just like a phallic symbol. If you're not getting anything out of them, then you might as well stand on a, on a platform at the edge of a bus stop and just start yelling your message. You're going to have all those people watching you, but none of them are engaged. Right. So it's about actually having engagement, and that's the key. Absolutely. I completely and totally agree with you. That's what I tell everybody. I'm like, why are you going to post all this stuff out there if you're not going to get engagement on it, right? So it's got to yeah. be catchy. It's got to be freaking funny. There's got to be humor out there. It's either going to be humorous or it's got to be something that's like, you know, uh, so, you know, a topic that's happening out there, you know, all over the world, something that's going to get people to go, oh, hell no, or oh, hell yes, or laughing or whatever. And that's super important. So I actually, um, I actually came up years ago and I always ask myself this, whenever I post anything or whenever I do a video or whenever I'm getting ready to do a speech or something, I always make sure I've got the three E's and it's entertain, engage and educate. And depending on who you're going with, if you're speaking to the Wall Street Journal, you'll educate first. If you're speaking to the Hollywood rep reporter, you'll entertain first. But engage has always got to be the, the key point in there. But depending on who you're talking to, entertain or engage will be, or ed, en, entertain or educate will become first. That is, that's probably, oh man, I really hope people are listening to this and watching this video. Even if you catch the replay, that right there is probably one of the biggest pieces of gold you're ever going to hear anybody say out loud, the three E's. Because that's what I do in this group all the time. And it's so freaking true. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So speaking of that, speaking of educating, you have a book coming out. Can you tell us the name of the book and what it's about? Yeah, it's called Blue Fishing, The Art of Making Things Happen. It's on stevedsims.com and it's on Amazon and all the usuals. Okay. Um, it took about two years, but I decided to take all of the things that I've got up to. And while they, you look at them and you go, how do I get someone down to see the Titanic or how do I take over a museum for, for a private meal? All these things I've done. What I've done is I've actually told the story of what I did and then broken it down into how I actually got into the room to be able to pull that off and really tore it down even further into a cheat sheet of playbooks so you can, on the back of every chapter, go, well, hang on a minute. Those steps there, yeah, they may help me do this with like Elton John or you know so-and-so with Sting, but I can take that to operate my carpet cleaning business or my accounting business or my consulting business. So I've really just tried to give the, hey, this is what I did. It's a big picture thing. But if you do the same, you can do whatever you want to do in your sandpit. So that's what it is. And it comes out on the uh, 17th of October. So that would be an ideal book for, say, maybe my husband, who's an event manager, and he schedules incentive trips and certain trade shows and things like that. These, there might be some pretty good nuggets of information on how you do that behind the scenes stuff and book like higher end clients and get into these spaces. That's really yeah. interesting. It's all about the engage. It's, it's all about the engagement and the building up of a relationship and how to communicate. And whether you're doing an event planning company or whether or not you're serving someone drinks over a bar, you can actually take the points in there to be able to build up that relationship. And quite simply, I have absolutely nothing other than startling good looks and a brilliant Rolodex. <laughs> That's awesome. I love and you, it. And you know one of those is true. Yeah. <laughs> At least one of those is true. That's yeah. That's absolutely fantastic. That's awesome. So you also mentioned to me that you have a virtual version of, of what you're doing that's coming out, right? So, so tell yeah. us about that. So Bluefish, uh, thebluefish.com, uh, Bluefish Concierge is the high-end, fee-based, magical, you want to go to space, you want a piano lesson with Elton John, all that kind of weird and wacky stuff. Um, we've released a new group called Taste of Blue, which is a streamlined version which is actually a um, concierge 
on your iPhone. At the moment, it's only for iPhone, so sorry, Galaxy people, but it's an app <laughs> that you can actually download and then communicate directly with one of our support groups, and it gives you deals on hotels, access to events, great perks on clothing, restaurants, clubs, all these different things. Um, so, But it's a streamlined uh, entry-level bluefish. This is this is really really cool. I, I tell you what, I didn't realize what a, what a treat of a conversation this was going to turn into. I want to see the, if I got any folks who have any questions. So, if any of you who are watching right now are, do you have any questions for Steve? I would I would love to uh, be able to quote unquote pick his brain a little bit. I know there are quite a few people in here who are either do event planning, do event marketing, uh, do things like this that you might be able to get you know, pick his brain a little bit. If not, you're going to miss out. And then we'll just have to make sure that they know how to get a, a hold of the book, Blue Fishing. You said it's, it's on Amazon. We're going to drop your link in here too and make sure that we can get a hold of that. Thank um, you. Steve, when are we going to the Grammys? Silvani is asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not That's coming to Elton's party. We actually have, um, we've partnered again with uh, Sir Elton John and we always do his Oscar party each year. And that is a blast. So <laughs> we're doing that again next year. Oh, man. All right. So now I'm going to ask you. So, all right. Who are some of your favorites? Can I get, like, top five favorite celebrities that you've worked with? Top five favorite celebs. Yeah, I want to do this. Now, over this. the past five years, the celebrity, the celebrity has changed. You know, five years or ten years ago, celebrities would have been film and music and sport. Right. Now we're finding some of those celebrities being business icons. Okay. So I would say um, Peter Diamandis, Elon Musk, oh, wow. um, Elton John, Sir Elton John, I uh, mm -hmm. should be polite there. Um, uh, one of my fond favorites was Andrea Bocelli. Um, mm -hmm. And someone that, constantly surprises me and celebrity is funny because in your in your sandbox you can be a huge celebrity but there's many people out there that may not know who peter diamandis is i, I didn't recognize the name no right so have you ever heard uh, virgin galactic yes okay the x prize the man that designed the competition before crowdfunding and crowdsourcing and all of that was this genius and he is Peter Diamandis, and he was the guy that put up $10 million for the first reusable space rocket. And oh. Richard Branson swooped in and bought it. And then Elon Musk became best friends with Peter. So Peter is not as well known as Elon, but oh my God, an absolute drop down genius when he's talking to you. Um, and then there's a, another guy that I would class now, a guy called Joe Polish. Mm -hmm. And again, people would go, who's Joe Polish? Joe's a guy that is so smart, he has a club called the 100K Club because it costs $100,000 to be a member. And Peter Diamandis and Richard Branson and Jean-Paul de Joy are all part of his group. And so there's some names in there that you know, there's some names in there that you, maybe you don't know, but are just as big as celebrities in their own sandpit. That is, so, I tell you, I'm one of those people, like I watch those, um, the Hollywood true stories and all, I'm, I'm just kind of fascinated with um, what, when they get to these certain levels of, of, you know, of stature, you know, whether it's it, Hollywood or whatever, it's, you know, some of these guys, like the producers and even like the behind the scenes folks, and like you're saying, like the, just the, the geniuses, you know, the, the businessmen, the Mark Cubans out there, right? Yeah. It, blows my mind the shit that they spend money on just to stay exclusive and to just not be bothered and that's really so that and that's a part of what you do right you you give yeah. that whole exclusivity to them so that they they can have fun without being out there with the paps after them right yeah i've, I've spoke i've had the i've had the pleasure of sitting down at tables with you know the people like i've just mentioned and others and conversations have come up and I remember someone turning around when someone was pitching an idea. It was this young girl that was in this party and she was going on about this, this career that she was going to get into. And um, this guy who's incredibly successful and very well known turned around and said, well, okay, first of all, know what you're going for. Do you want fame or fortune? And she was like, well, I want to be famous so I can do this. I can do that. And he went, well, hang on a minute. If you've got fortune, you can do all of that and no one knows. If you've got fame, your house becomes an elaborate jail. 
Yep. And it was like, oh, that was that was a bit of a, a dark night come in there. But he was saying about, and he represents a lot of uh, very famous clients. And he said they can't go out. He said they may be able to go out here. And for us, our clients, we deal with a lot of those people. And we have what's called ghosters. So we will have someone go into Venice. They will go into the hotel. They will book up the room. They will pay for the room. Then they will leave the hotel. And the celebrity will then get the key. So that even the hotel doesn't know the that celebrity they're there. Is staying in there. So because quite simply, a lot of these people in there, the porters and the, uh, the cleaners and the maids and the people like this, they get 500 bucks if they can suddenly say the Brad Pitt's in the room. Now they're yeah. not supposed to, but you know, how many people do what they're not supposed to? So. Exactly. No, exactly. Wow. It's just, and that's just it. You know, I, I, years ago, this is kind of a cool, this is turning in a really fun conversation for me because years ago when I was a teenager, I was, I did theater acting and I, I always kind of had this like, you know, aspiring dream. I want to go to Hollywood. I want to make movies. I don't even care if they're like, you know, crappy movies, you know, and one of my favorite, one of my favorites, one of my favorite script writers and, and like, like, the, like one of the big wigs was Kevin Smith. I freaking love Kevin Smith. Even when he made crap, I loved him because <laughs> he didn't care. Like he just didn't care. He's never really cared. He's just, whatever, I'm going to make movies way, like my way and then that's it. And I've always loved him for that. And, but I look at some of how these people live their lives. Like you're saying, you know, they literally have to, it's, everything's a secret. So is it really worth it in the end for, you yeah. know, but they're living out their passion, I feel like. So God bless them. But you know, I, I just, I don't know if I'd want to do that. <laughs> I don't know well, if I want to raise my kids like that. It's called Tinsel Town for a reason. And a lot right. of people come over here with the big dream that they're going to get this and they're going to get that. And it's going to be, well, over here, it doesn't really happen that much. And I know it's funny, but you're walking to, you can walk into anything from a, from a coffee bean or a Starbucks, or you can walk into a high-end restaurant or a sushi parlor down on Beverly Hills. And if you stood up and turned the lights up, there's probably three or four people in there that you recognize. Right. So they think they come here and all of a sudden the red carpet's going to be laid out. Like, for I'm going to say, we handle the Emmys. Uh, we have a private box of the Emmys. There are celebrities, shall we say, um, that are, are names, but not quite the big names. And they will contact us trying to get uh, tickets and access out of us because they couldn't get it through the Emmys. And for that year, they'd been overlooked because maybe that show is well known, but it's not been out for a few years. So they've been kind of like bumped to the cheap seats. Um, and it's very vicious. It's very harsh to suddenly have a major program that's really successful for three or four years. And you can think of these. There's many of them. Seinfeld, uh, Friends, um, Heroes, yeah. uh, Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. Yeah, all of these programs that you know, yeah. but not a lot of those people have done much afterwards. Correct. Yeah, at the time... They couldn't walk down a street in London without being recognized because they were a syndicated international show. And now they're stood there going, well, I, do you remember five years ago there was this show? That's a half life. And I, I don't have that thick enough skin for that game. <laughs> I don't think I would either, to be honest with you. No. You remember when I was in that one show for like a five year span and it was great at the time. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when you have to explain your bio to, to get someone to remember you, you know it's wrong. When you're when you people have to say, wait a minute, let me IMDB you to verify. Yeah, yeah let me let me Google you. How how do you spell your last name? Yeah. That's hey, hilarious. You know, uh, That's awesome. Hey Chris, I gotta tell you, I'm really excited about having you on here today. Um I, the one last question I do want to ask you to people who are trying to do something similar to what you're doing, like re, for me personally, to have you on here, I'm, I'm very honored to be honest with you because now I, I have, I know what your background is. I've gotten to know you a little bit. You're awesome. And you're obviously a very, very smart businessman. So I think my question to you would be to people who are just starting out, somebody like myself, what, what would be your best advice on, um, making connections with some of those higher level people, some of those influencers out there in the industry that I'm in um, to not feel like kind of, I don't know, nervous about just going for it and, and, and trying to, you know, get access to them and talk to them. Everybody you speak to. Okay. So let's break this down. The person that you're trying to get hold of, mm -hmm. I've never Googled a client. And just to give you an example, like my website has no phone number. 
you can't phone me. You can't contact me. You have to apply for membership. And when you apply for membership, you're then asked to be uh, schedule a call to be interviewed. Okay. So we interview every single new applicant for Bluefish. And, you know, some people go, you know, who the hell can you interview? I want to make sure if you're coming into my family, you're the right fit. But the first thing that I make sure we never do is Google the client. Because I don't want to give the chance in my head and my gut to put that person on a pedestal. Now, we've interviewed clients and then taken them on or denied them. And then we Google them and go, holy shit, they own Ford, you know, or something like that. You know? <laughs> right. Or, you know, a country. Um, <laughs> we've, we've, we've done that. We've interviewed people. And then we've gone, you know, that person I interviewed this morning, yeah? He owns our coffee machine. You know, the whole brand that makes my coffee machine <laughs> is my client now, you know? Um, and so we, we've been able to do that. We don't Google them before because we don't want them to get too ahead. So if there's someone in your head and you go, hey, I want to meet that celebrity, humanize them first, okay? Get to realize they're a normal person, okay? If you put them on a pedestal, you're only pushing them further away for you to get onto an even keel with them and a level playing field. Now, if you've got someone in your sites that you want, you're going to get 10, 20, 30 gatekeepers yeah. for that. Every single person you talk to is a new relationship you need to build. Now, here's something beautiful. This really happens. None of those people stay in the same job for long. Okay? Right. And so if you're really good with that, you know, that lady, that, that Tina middle management and you're really really polite with her really respectful really engaging with her mm -hmm. okay and if she says something about oh i can't get back to you tomorrow uh tonight because i'm going to a dodgers game tonight you go okay fine next time you contact her say well who won how was the dodgers game and she's like what who won you said you, you went to see the dodgers game i was watching on tv i saw there was a brilliant part you may have no idea about dodgers who gives a crap <laughs> research it and just ask her and she'll be like oh now the beautiful thing is that tina will reach out to you and go oh just to let you know i'm not working for that company anymore i'm now working for sir so-and-so congratulations send her a bottle of wine send her some flowers send her a box of chocolates congratulations on your new position put that in your roller days you never know when you need that person that's right that's right, right. And so you're, every single person on the way up is just as important as everyone else on the way down. And they scatter. And I swear I've got into doors which quite simply have been shut because someone's gone in there and gone, no, oh, hang on a minute, that guy is good. You know, hear him out, you know? And that's what's happened. So when you want to get to that one person, realize there's 30 people you've got to know before you get to that one person. So whenever you phone up, say, you know, hey, my name is so-and-so, and I really want to be read. What do I need to do? Ask them the question. Don't go, hey, can you put me through to so-and-so? Because they're going to say no, because it's the shortest word in the human language, and everyone in the planet knows what no means. So <laughs> you say, hey, what have I got to do to make this happen? What have I got to do to be able to get time with so-and-so? Yeah. Now, if I ask you, what have I got to do to do X? The one word you can't answer is no. Because right. you sound like a moron. I've <laughs> asked you a question. You've just gone, no. I, I, I didn't ask you anything that you could answer no to. I said, what have I got to do? You, know, you can say, I'm sorry, I don't have the time. Hey, that's fine. Let me come back to you later on. Is there a good So you do that. You keep it going. But never ask a question that the person can answer no to unless that's the answer you want them to give you. That right there might be one of the best pieces. Those, that's at least two or three pieces of advice that Steve's given us this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, that you can take with you into the rest of your business. And if you implement it, you will completely suck at life. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. Steve, I'm telling you, I don't want to take any more of your time. And quite frankly, I got to go get my kids soon. So thank you very, very much. I appreciate you joining us. Please do me a favor and message me the links to access your virtual concierge service and the link to your book. 
And um, I'm sure you're going to get people who are going to try to reach out to you and be your friend. So uh, please, I apologize in advance for anybody <laughs> who tries to freaking spam you. If they do, if they do, just make sure they're entertaining, engaging, and educating, and I'll answer them. That's if right. That's and don't ask important. an answer that you don't get the, the, the answer no to. <laughs> bingo. Bingo. <laughs> um, I can learn. I can be taught. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Steve. I appreciate your time. Have a fantastic evening. Thanks. Bye. Peace out. <clears throat>